Wonderful. It's great to be here with you. First, I'd like to say thank you um, for this opportunity to be with you. Um, it's, it's always an interesting experience to be at the end. And so all of you should get an award for hanging in there this whole day. I know it's been really busy. Um, it's been an exciting experience, um, very insightful on multiple levels. So welcome to the end of Lideres Day One. Um, kudos to LMSA leadership and all the faculty who have contributed their time, knowledge, and shared their leadership journeys. This has really been a valuable experience and a unique one across our nation. This is very, um, you're here in this inaugural experience, which is the first time where we bring together all Latino speakers, primarily, I think it was like 97% of the speakers were Latino, um, senior leaders, um, young faculty, more senior faculty, residents. So this is really a unique experience um, and we hope to continue to support this on behalf of the AMC. Uh, as a leadership development experience, you know, what's most critical is having an opportunity to reflect on all the insights that you've gained throughout the day. Oftentimes what happens, you know, you may go to a conference and you're very excited, you learn a lot and then you leave and you go back to your campuses and you don't really fully implement everything that you've learned, but you can't really recall what you were gonna do. So this is your opportunity um, to really reflect and think about what are at least a few actions that you're gonna take as a result of what you learned today. And so what I'd say is I have two questions for your reflection. I'd like you to either take out the program, the notebook, if you know, you're old school, you like to write things down, or your phone with your favorite task managing app and reflect on these two questions. So the first one I'd say, based on what you've learned today, what are two to three actions that you will take to advance your career? So let's just take about a minute to reflect. What are two to three actions that you'll take to advance your career? So next, I'd like you to reflect on how will you build your network, your community to advance your career? What we've learned today is that really we need each other. We need each other to support our success, to really find opportunities, to be able to get letters of recommendation. So how are you going to build your community? What actions are you going to take to build your community to advance your career? So we'll reflect on that for a minute. So these will only become real if you make a public declaration. So I challenge all of you to share, share with the community here, the Lideres community. Tell us what you, what actions you're going to take. Please put them in the chat. We'd love to see them. And as we go along, I'd share the, I'll share the reflections um, while I also talk about maybe some other key reflections and insights that we gain throughout the day. So I'd love to see who's going to be the first person to drop in the chat. What actions are you going to take based on what you learned at Lideres in day one? So don't be shy. Share in the chat. In one session, um, Dr. Gutierrez noted that the data gives us fuego, you know, and the data says it all. So what does that mean? We recognize that um, we as a LHS plus community are needed as leaders in academic medicine, right? So we are 
pretty much absent, you know, especially as you go along higher levels of leadership, chairs and deans. And so leaders is really focused on really making a difference in that representation. So I see, um, thank you, our colleague Juan Amador, he shared that he's gonna look for conflict resolution programs as recommended by senior leaders. Tell us more about what else you're gonna do. Please enter it in the chat. Let's share it, let's make it public so that if we have colleagues that we know, we can say, hey, remember when you were leaders, you said you were gonna do X, Y, and Z. What's up, did you do it, right? Lo hiciste, que paso? Take a chance when it comes to opportunity. I love that. Stanford has a leadership development program, AMC leadership development programs. Yes, join us. Actually, we just opened our registration for the September conference for early career. So we have openings. We're going to open for mid-career soon in October. Request support for my new VC role, training and conflict resolution. Let's keep it coming. What else are we going to do? So this is important, right? One of the things that we learned today is share your career aspirations. And this is a theme that came out throughout the conference. Tell a chair, your dean, peers, the familia, let them know what's your next step. What do you wanna see? What do you wanna see yourself become? in academic medicine or in other areas. So share your career aspirations because one of the things that Dean's mentioned is that they don't know. They don't really always cannot predict what is it that you're interested in. So don't be afraid to let them know and declare your career interest, right? Ask for support and resources. It doesn't hurt to ask. A lot of what came out here today is as the Latino community, sometimes we don't like to bother people. We don't like to ask. And so get out of that mold, break it, ask for things, let people know what you need in order to be successful. Leverage your cultural assets and recognize when we need to adjust based on career interests and needs. So for example, one of our faculty noted, LHS faculty may have the tendency of being humble, right? You know, don't be too prideful. But while on the leadership track, this is not a time to be humble. It's a time to toot your horn. So make known your accomplishments, whether this is within newsletters at your institution, whether it's using it through social media, really toot your horn. Share with others what you've been doing. So Huang, I see you have your hands up. Acosta, do you want to share something with us? Yeah, I have a question. Where do you draw the line between, you know, so there's a lot of microaggression, a lot of, you know, biases towards us, but where do you draw the line to put your foot down and stand up for what you believe, taking a chance that you may not get that next promotion or, or, be, or, or asked to, to do the next job because they don't want a troublemaker, uh, <laughs> for lack of better yeah. word. Now that is is a very it's a very challenging situation, especially with microaggressions, because they're always not very clear and obvious to others about how they're making someone feel less than, right, or how they're making you feel uncomfortable. So oftentimes, people say that wasn't my intention, right? I didn't mean to be, you know, racist or discriminatory, or and what's important is that you indicate. You know, when you said this, this is how it made me feel. And I think it's important that you understand that. And one of our speakers talked about the importance and recognition, especially with the kind of reawakening, racial reckoning in our society, that there is a greater awareness of, you know, inclusion, diversity, equity. And so aligning it probably also as well with institutional values, like our institution values diversity, right? Values, inclusion. And I just want to share with you that this is, you said something maybe in a meeting that made me feel this way. It might not have been your intention to, you know, cause harm, but it did. And oftentimes we have to maybe take someone aside and talk with them because sometimes if it becomes this public forum, it, it becomes contentious and, and the meaning of what's happening gets lost, right? The defensiveness comes up. So it's one of those things that you have to decide, is this important enough to me in order to be able to communicate that? And sometimes being able to address the harm is so important, right? Because it really helps to make you feel connected to the institution, helps you to feel belong if you have 
hopefully the person will respond in a way that makes you feel and understand that maybe they didn't intend to say something the way they said it. Um, or maybe if they did intend it, at least you know what you're dealing with. And I think one of our speakers said, um, especially regarding uh, LGBTQ identity, that some students have been told, don't reveal that you, you know, how you identify, right? And, and think about that. What does that mean? That means you're not being your true self. You're not bringing your full self to a place. So do you really want to be in that kind of environment, right? And so our last session was all about wellness and well-being and thinking about what is it that is going to bring you happiness? What's, what's the kind of environment that's going to help you thrive? So I think all of that comes into play. And I think it's a great question in terms of our experiences as, you know, Latinas and Latinos in, in academia. So thank you for that. So we keep seeing here a lot of great reflections. Um, Lourdes says, realize that there is more than one path to get to the same goal. If I can't find assistance with my institution, look for help and guidance elsewhere. Yes, and this was a great um, idea with regards to go to other institutions. Think about the network you have here with Líderes. Think about your academic societies. Think about the National Hispanic Medical Association. There are many other places that if you don't find the support internally, you can go to the AMC. There are multiple professional development communities where you could find connections with others who have similar experiences who are willing who are there to support you. So that was another important thing. So I want to just highlight a few others. We talked a little bit about the importance of intersectionality, recognizing that, right, the Latino community is not a monolith, right? We come from different nationalities, cultures, experiences, immigration histories, history in the United States, um, our race, sex, gender, identity, age, socioeconomic background, that is a very rich and diverse community. And thinking about how we acknowledge that intersectionality and embrace it as we move forward, not only in our career, but in supporting others. When seeking leadership opportunities, look for what's missing and develop what is needed. So this was a great idea in terms of, you know, if you're looking for a leadership opportunity and you're not sure, you can step up to do something different at an institution. Maybe you need to start another, maybe there's a need for another department. Maybe there's an opportunity to develop a center. Maybe there are resources that are needed for your institution. These are also opportunities to show your leadership at your institution. Some other insights and themes that, you know, I picked up on today, um, skills and conflict resolution. I think Juan Amador said he was going to go find training and a few others as well. Financing and funding, um, knowledge and experience is very helpful as you long, move along the leadership ladder. Serve on different committees to learn the culture and systems within your institution. Learning process to advance from your, in your career, learn that process, see what the guidelines are at your institution. Many of the things that we hear, especially for early career faculties, they don't know. They don't know what the steps are. And if you visit your faculty affairs office, everything should be written out. So what does that faculty handbook say about leadership progression at your institution? Um, again, use your medical societies for leadership opportunities and programs. Build collaborations as the LHS Plus community. We, you know, we value connections, right? We value family and community. And so for us, it's very natural to be able to build those collaborations. And those collaborations will help when writing papers, when you need letters of recommendation, um, when you want to be, you know, invited for grand rounds to basically increase your visibility. And that's important, you know, when you're going from one level to the other in academia. Publish, publish, publish. There's so many great things that you might be doing depending on your track, whether it's research as educators on a clinical track. It's so critical to be able to have evidence, right? And really seeing it in writing, being peer reviewed, be able to contribute to chapters, making sure that your work is known through multiple forums will also support your academic progression and career progression. And to round it out, you know, we heard a lot and here you have in the uh, chat a lot of resources about prioritizing your well-being. As healthcare professionals, you're very focused on helping others. 
Don't forget to take care of yourself. We need to prioritize our well-being in order to be successful in helping others, whether that is an edu educator, as a clinician, as a researcher, you know, basic things like getting sleep, um, reconnecting with things that you love, making sure that you are seeking out professional resources to help you. So these are all valuable in terms of really being able to be successful, right? Because if your health is not well, if your mental well-being, emotional well-being is not on point, it really is going to really undermine anything else that you do in your career. So the critical importance of taking care of yourself. And I thought what was really important for us as a community, especially when we think about intersectionality, women in particular, is taking a risk recognizing you don't always have to check every box in the job requirements list in order to apply. So that was a consistent theme in terms of hearing about the different journeys of our senior leaders is that, you know, I was approached, I didn't have all the requirements, but I was really encouraged to do this. I did it and it led me to this point. Or hearing a story that says, you know, one person was told they only have 50% of the requirements or 50% chance of getting this opportunity. I was told the same thing. That person applied and got the position. I didn't apply and I wasn't promoted. So really thinking about, you know, you don't have to check every box in order to basically go for an opportunity. So those are some of the insights and themes that I gathered for today. And we have a lot of great comments here. We hope that you continue to share. What is it that you plan to do? So Ugo says here, look for mentors that can guide me and introduce me to the field of academic medicine. Let my PhD and chair, uh, my PD, my program director and chair, let them know that what his goals are. Look for committees and leadership programs. Um, Look into ELAM, that's been a program, especially um, specifically for women, that's been mentioned quite a bit. Say yes to opportunities offered, but also remembering the importance of being strategic, right? How is that opportunity, especially as a um, racial ethnic minority within academic medicine, you're going to be asked to be on multiple multiple committees. And so the importance of being strategic in selecting opportunities for committees and program representation that will uh, give you that opportunity to advance, will give you that visibility, but most importantly, align with your passions and your interests. So again, not just say yes, but thinking strategically when you say yes, or you could say, you know, I can't do this right now, but I have someone else who could potentially do this. Um, you know, so thinking about how that opportunity may be helpful to somebody else in your community as well. So I'm just keep adding here in terms of your actions, organize my CV, in my institutional format, one of the great um, ideas that came about is just create a spreadsheet. So as you do things, you just drop it in there and then you update your CV more regularly, maybe once a month, maybe every three months, but make sure that you document everything that you do. That's going to be so critical for your portfolio as you seek advancement. So we love to hear any other insights, ideas, um, whether it's in the chat or you can unmute yourself and please share what you're thinking about. So here Lourdes says, you know, seek mentors and sponsors, become a mentor and a sponsor. That's critical too. So great to have seen in print the differences between um, Caucasian and Latino forms of leadership bringing into our culture. I will continue to promote initiatives in the wilderness and disaster medicine in Latin America. Thank you, Dario, for sharing that. Uh, no problem. So as we reflect on today, you know, we definitely want to give you some homework and it's very light homework don't worry um, but really think about you know how you all each will drive excellence you know whether it's in education clinical work research service you know how can you transform your interest in leadership to really advance the various missions in academic medicine 
think about that. Think about how that aligns with your career passions um, because we really want you to fully optimize this time that you're with us. Because again, you know, this is your protected time. And once you leave us here, you're going back to kind of your everyday real world um, focus on everybody else most likely. So think about what you want to do and how you're going to contribute and how that's going to help you advance as a leader in academic medicine. Dr. Paul, before we can conclude, before we conclude, can you please share in your role um, what you're responsible for in terms of the human capital portfolio? It's a big term, and um, I think it's important for people to know. Besides reaching out to you as a psychologist for well-being, <laughs> um, how they can align with your efforts to promote uh, LHS's um, presence throughout the pipeline. Sure. Thank you, Dr. Sanchez. Um, you know, I think Dr. Sanchez takes liberty in giving me extra work because we're both New Yorkans from the Bronx. So, <laughs> so you know, I, I have to just say yes to everything he asked me. But, um, you know, within the association, and I think you've seen my colleague, Juan Amador, who's um, added a lot of resources at the AMC. And our focus, you know, I work within equity, diversity, inclusion, and we did change our name, titles of our work because some, some of them weren't as clear, like, for example, human capital, um, but now it's workforce diversity. And really, my focus is on increasing um, diversity along the medical education continuum. So starting as early as elementary school, all the way through faculty and leadership development. So you've seen some of the programs that were mentioned at AMC fall within the portfolio, the early career and a mid-career program. So I will put my contact information. Um, you know, if you use social media, it would be great, you know, to follow me on social media because I do post a lot of information about resources and programs at the association. Or just feel free to email me because we are here to serve. Um, we are here to support all of you. So if you need ideas about, hey, I'm interested in joining a committee, can you keep me in mind? Or I'd love to present and be faculty at an AMC meeting. Um, here's my specialty. Here's my focus. Um, you know, so we are so we are here to offer those opportunities to you and support and also to hear from you about what we should be doing differently at this association. How can we be of better support to the Latino LHS plus community? We have to get used to that one. Um, and so that's kind of what we do. And, um, you know, that's why I find it a pleasure to be with you here today, because, again, this is such a unique experience where we're helping our comunidad, you know, and um, we really want to see the change. And I think programs like this are really going to make a difference in terms of um, our representation and our engagement in academic medicine. So I'll put my email um, and I'll put my Twitter handle. I'm trying to get better at that. So <laughs> that's another way to reach me. So I don't know if there were any, if anyone would love to unmute themselves, share a reflection before we call it a night. Uh, I'd just like to say I'm... I'm just so um, happy uh, and joyful about this institute. And I wanna thank um, everyone that was on the planning committee um, and, and Dr. Sanchez's vision for this institute. Uh, like I said, I've, I've been involved with uh, El Maceo since I was a medical student and um, have uh, been involved since the second national conference of LMSA and it's just so exciting to see so much involvement um, by faculty members uh, and, and the growth and um, it's just really like making me want to cry with joy to see so many faculty here. Thank you Dr. Sandoval. And so um, our colleagues here have also put our social media um, 
information. So definitely tweet on your experience, Facebook, Instagram, share with everyone what you're learning, what you're going to do, what you're taking away. That's always a great way to also increase your visibility and share what you're doing. So thank you again. Um, for being with us and we look forward to seeing you in the morning you'll see me again i'll be opening it up sharing some more insights so love to hear from you have a great evening and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow buenas noches thank you dr paul and thank you again to all of our latest uh, attendees um, for those who received zoom information for the career consultation and advising sessions um, you may proceed to that Zoom link that you were sent in a separate email, uh, and we'll get uh, going shortly. For the rest of everyone, see you tomorrow.